Hello everyone, okay, another soap to make today. So today I'm going to make a big batch of festival soap. Festival soap has a nag champer, patchouli and wood smoke. So this is like um, inspired by Glastonbury Festival, one of those type of, you know, incense-y, outdoors -y smells. It's very hippie, very new age and a very big seller. So I, I think the last time I made it, I made three loaves. So I'm going to make five loaves today. So this is just going to be one big batch of festival. Um, usually I will melt down my oils enough to do like five different batches, but everything is selling quickly all the time at the moment, um, probably due to everybody needing soap. So I'm going to be starting to make these bigger batches. And to be honest, when it's a soap making day, it's probably easier for me to do it that way than to think, oh, I'll do three loads of that and two loads of that, because then you just end up getting in a mess. So to be just doing one big batch each time I make is a lot easier for me. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, yeah, what I, what I will do, because I'm doing it in my big pot, I will mix it all up first. And then when I'm getting to pour the colours to sort of pull those off will start at that point otherwise you you're not going to see anything anyway because it's all too the pot's too big so I'll do it okay just ready to pour some off this is going to be tricky because it's a large pot but how much do I want probably full jugs of these so colours in after. So this will make 85 bars at about 140 grams each, so like a 5 ounce bar. Base has rattle clay or gasol you can say some people say rattle I say rattle some people say gasol so into these then I've got ultramarine blue and green oxide yellow oxide and Australian reef red clay okay so I'm going to want to stick blend those in a sec let me get my okay so this one is Moroccan they call it gasol clay this is from Mystic Moments take a good scoop of that ready for my base so it doesn't really exfoliate but it gives a bit of texture and colour to the batch Just put that to the side so lightest colour first okay now fragrance oil so in these batches I use about 180 five grams of fragrance just to do the pouring because otherwise it could go everywhere when I try and pour from this big pot it's too heavy to hold for too long so start pouring and go about three quarters of the way up each mould
as I go is a lot easier. Just finding the right technique when you're trying to make from you know one batch to five. It's a bit tricky. Like I like that's why I prefer using a big slab mold because then you can just pour it in, it's a lot easier than this. But I like the ease of having loads to cut rather than having to cut on a you know, cut into logs and then cut the bars, so that's why it's easy to do it this way. Right, I do probably want to reserve a bit for the top. So I'll just scrape out this roll. Leave that to the side a sec. Now we can start pouring in the colours. So as you can see it stays pretty fluid, which is nice. Okay. I'll bring you in a bit closer because you're a bit far away there. Hold on. I'm going to use the red because it thickens sometimes a bit quicker than the rest. So I hope everybody's doing good out there. I had some bad news yesterday. There's a guy that we love in the skateboard world who died on the 31st of March, his name was Jeff Grosso and yeah, he was just like one of my favourites to watch, he was so funny and so raw and yeah, very very sad news so the whole skateboard world is like oh no, you know, it's really horrible <laughs> so even though you don't meet these people, they become like it's weird, you know, it's weird. They, it's such a a big thing, but it's such a small thing at the same time. And you always feel like you know these people because you've followed them all your life. And it was like losing a big brother, you know. Me and Matt actually cried yesterday. Um, yeah, yesterday when we woke up, it was horrible. He was like, oh, no, no, no. And, you know, it sort of just opened my eyes. And he just looked on Instagram. And we always lie in bed in the morning and have a cup of tea and see what's going on. And then that was the news yesterday. It was just, but first we thought it was an April Fool. Thought it was a prank. Like literally really thought it was a prank. So it's the sort of thing he'd do. But, yeah, unfortunately the news was true and it was, it's just so sad. It's just so sad. Because he leaves behind a little boy and, you know. It's, it's just awful. He wasn't very old, he was only in his 50s or like just early 50s. Gutted. So I watched his uh, episode on the Nine Club yesterday just to watch him because he's, he's so funny. So if you don't know who Jeff Grosso is or you don't follow skateboarding but you don't mind people who are a bit raw <laughs> then there's a Nine Club episode that you could watch. And then you'll know who I'm talking about. But yeah, it's great. He was great. And always made me laugh. He's just just a great, great person. A big, big loss for, you know, skateboard community. It's just... It's not nice, is it? You have to lose people. It's horrible. Okie dokie. Right. So now, I want to start getting this ready for the top. I'm still packing lots of orders at the moment. They still keep flooding in and it's great. Mail order has been really busy the last couple of weeks. So everything just keeps selling all the time. So it's really good. I'm so thankful because if it didn't keep selling, I'd be screwed right now. And it's just so 
lucky, I'm so lucky that I can come to work because if I couldn't come in then I'd have no income at all and you know don't want to think about what could happen there but that's the case that's how it is but because I work alone and everything is closed like I said in my last videos it's it's not too much of an issue and actually not too much has changed for me it's still kind of you know the same kind of thing really it, the only difference is the fear not that that's mattering to me now I've got over my fear I'm not worried about it anymore um, but just the interaction with human beings <laughs> is non-existent up here at the moment which is just that's the sad part you know I, I mean not that I saw people that much in the daytime but to not have anybody at all is you know and I can't none of my family can come and visit like they sometimes do so it just feels like there's nobody around and it's you know you do feel isolated but I'd much rather be here with something to do than sitting at home with nothing to do, you know? So I'm thankful for, for being able to just come into work, really. Well, I am really thankful. And Matt's at work as well, because there's two others that work at the pottery, but the two other lads are off. So Matt's able to go in and make pots, and he's been doing some Instagram lives. I think I've posted his Instagram last week, or the Pottery Instagram, so you can go and check that out if you want to watch him do some live videos, because he's on his own all day too. We're just not doing like, well today I've done a full day, but mainly I'm not really having to rush around. It's like, you know, there's stuff to always be done, but it's kind of, at the same time as it's, what is happening is awful, it's kind of quite nice because it's not so fast paced, it's not so crazy, which is a nice feeling, you know, not to have to be rushing around and everybody's fine about parcels whenever they get there, they get there. So I'm not having to stress about getting parcels out the door, I'm just doing everything and taking it all in my stride and still managing to stay within my turnaround time and still managing to make product and still managing, you know, just to come to work. So I'm, I feel privileged. I really do. It's a really, really nice feeling. I've been thinking, you know, when it is all back to normal, if it ever gets back to normal, because Lord only knows, you know, <laughs> I think things will change quite drastically for us all, which is probably for the best, because the way we've all carried on in the world in the past few years is just, it's not normal, you know. When you really think about it, it's not normal. What on earth are we all doing? Rushing around like absolute idiots. And the world is too fast. You know, we've been saying it for so long. And now this has happened. It's made us all take us, you know, sit back and think, oh, yeah, what are we doing? <laughs> Calm down. Calm down. You don't have to go at a million miles an hour. You should be able to enjoy your family and that's, a, you know, it's things. I'm, it's just all of a sudden things are popping up. Like now the fear has gone out of most people and we're just waiting for it to take its course and leave. In between all of that, people are really enjoying being with their families and being with their kids and things you never have a chance to do. Just that, that peaceful family time, you know, it's very, very nice. I know people are doing jigsaw puzzles and everybody's painting rainbows and putting rainbows in the windows as a sign of hope and yeah it's a at the same time as it's really nasty it's actually brought people people's better sides up you know I think making everybody sort of wake up which is really really good and the lack of sirens you know, normally when I'm making videos, you probably heard them. It's like nearly every video, there's probably several times the sirens are going up and down the street, up and down the street, and we're not even a busy town. You know, what well, we are, we're getting bigger and bigger all the time, like everywhere, but there's no, there's no sirens, you know, constantly. And normally it's like all day, every day, something's going on, and it's just not happening at the moment. 
So that's very nice. Okay, bring you in a bit closer for the top. Okay, so just the usual flipping over of the top then. Bring all those colours in. So pretty, so pretty. Oh my God, look at it. So nice to make a big batch. And that's the last thing I'm going to be doing today as well. I think I've got deliveries maybe coming tomorrow. So I'm running out of boxes. I've run out of like small size boxes for packing orders. So I've ordered them, but I've ordered everything to be delivered to my house because it's easier because of this gated area. If they can't get in, I won't get my parcel. So I just have to see if they're going to give me tracking so I can see when it's going to arrive and then I can take my dog for a walk, get back, get the deliveries and then I can come to work afterwards. So just have to change up, you know, my routine a little bit to get what I need. But I've run out of bottles, I've run out of boxes, I've run out of ingredients, like some for different products. So I'm waiting for all those to come. Okay, that's that. Now, I'm going to take my gloves off and get my goggles off as well for a sec. Chamomile. Chamomile flowers that go on the top. And I just sprinkle these down the sides of each soap. Okay, that will do. So I'll take some pictures of this wet soap for you so you can see an up close of that. And then I'll be back sometime tomorrow to cut it. Okay, so that is festival festival soap. See ya. Okay, time to cut festival then. So I've cut a few already just off camera and I'll just cut the last two so you can see what it came out like. I'll lose a few bits of that chamomile off the top there. She's always a shame but you can't reuse it. <laughs> just keep my bowl handy. Okie dokie. So it's Friday afternoon, I've just been doing a few of my product files on the portal, so I had a few new soaps to add that I've not done before and I've done that. I've just uploaded yesterday's portion of the, well not uploaded but got the video ready so I can go home and edit it in a second. So I won't be at work for too long today, I'm not really sure what to do and it's Friday. I don't really like to um, do too much on a Friday to leave things undone on a Saturday because at the moment I'm, I'm not coming to work on Saturdays. I'm staying in, you know, in the week is that's enough. I'm only doing a few hours a day anyway as it is. And like I say, I'm very, very minimal risk here because there's nobody around my workspace and I get in the car to come here, I get out of the car and I come through the door and it's all locked and nobody can get in this area because it's all gated off so it's very safe but I still don't like being here for too long it's just kind of feels really weird at the moment but I'm sure it's not going to be too long Still got that in my head i'm still being positive about it and you know you've got lots of people saying otherwise but i'm not listening <laughs> i'm not listening i'm thinking positive 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 all the time because that's the way to be positivity <laughs> okay so there is festival swirl i love this soap 
Everybody loves this soap. This is my family's favourite. Like, if I make it, Matt's like, bring me some bars, bring me some bars home. <laughs> and like, there's lots of my customers who are really into these hippie scents. And they'll, like, as soon as festival is available, it just flies off the shelf, which is lovely. But it means that, yeah, that's why I'm making this big batch because it's very popular. And I've been making this actually since I started out making soap and making it, <coughs> pardon me, making it part of a business, you know, part of the business, because I used to sell plants before doing this. So when I started making soap, I made Festival because I've always been obsessed with that incense, you know, the Satya Sai Baba Night Champa incense. I've always loved that. And when I found the fragrance that smelled exactly like the incense, it was like, oh lordy, oh lordy. So I like to mix things, as you know. So to make it more hippie, I added the patchouli and some wood smoke fragrance. So it's got this really nice, smoky, hippie, just like, this is why it's called Festival, because of Glastonbury Festival. It smells like when we used to go in our 20s, it was I don't know what it's like anymore, I'm sure it's still pretty much the same, but when we used to go it was just all hippies in their trucks, like their little vans that they converted into their homes and you could just smell incense just wafting everywhere and then all the wood smoke from all the fires because they would provide all the wood at the festival for you to use and create an outdoor fire. So that's the inspiration for this soap and it's something that really never goes out of fashion you know that kind of a scent because everybody pretty much loves a festival and everybody loves that scent well I do that outdoorsy smell of when you can smell fires in the distance it, it oh I love that I love that so much it's just lovely like that it's like almost um well in the summer it's nice to smell it because it's just literally wood you know wood fires outside not so much autumnal fire it's like definitely like a summertime vibe you know so that's what this is all about and since there'll be no festivals this year perfect for me to have made as many as i have because people <laughs> can get a little glimpse into that feeling by smelling this as we know scent takes us off into places where our memories are held and you know scent is very powerful thing so yeah festival has always been a family favorite and a customer favorite so that is when was it i started 2006 that's quite a number of years since it's been in the making here, well, in this crevices, but you know, since I've been making soap, a long time, long ass time. swirly and pretty. I love it. Oh my god, it smells so good. So that is the Nature's Garden Nag Champa mixed with patchouli oil and a bit of wood smoke. Oops. So I just trim up a sham for all the edges of my soaps. And I used to plane all of them off in the middle, but I don't do that anymore because life's too short. <laughs> it's not just that, it's um I'm just gonna cut that on its top to see how it comes out. It's um time consuming and you end up shaving off you know part of the soap and you want to keep as much of the soap as you can, especially now I'm cutting inch cuts, I don't want to lose any of it just for the sake of having a very smooth bar. So I don't do it anymore, but I do trim the edges and all the sides and the base is obviously smooth because the moulds are silicone, so it's fine. 
just adds a little rustic edge. <laughs> so there we go, that's Festival, all made, all ready to go on the curing racks once I trim them all up. So I'll be back. I should think next week sometime. It's yeah, Friday, so I won't be filming probably until Monday, maybe, maybe after Monday, because I've got um, deliveries coming of boxes for mail order packing because I've run out of well, I've run out, but I've run out of small sizes of boxes, and when people have ordered like one or two bars of soap. I only need the small size boxes and I ran out of them. So I've got to wait for that. And I'm guessing that's going to arrive on Monday because they haven't come yet. So yeah, I'll probably be making soap midweek, but you'll see me very soon. Take care of yourselves. Ta-ta.